So with Papua, probably, yeah, what we're gonna talk about, uh, we got three or two. Yeah, we got three. Uh, so, uh, L'Oreal, oh no. No, wait. Oh, we're probably, uh, gonna get the, uh, the sacrifice one and then the loyal uh cerberus i wonder how <laughs> how that sacrifice scene is gonna change <laughs> or or if it even will change what well, what context what details are we gonna get you know about you know about the town that, that we didn't get before that that's what i really want to know Learned anything new about the Shadow Lord's key, Popola? You know, I was just going to talk to you about that. You remember the Airy, right? That depressing shell of a village? Not so much anymore, it sounds like. I just got this letter from the village chief. Have a look. Uh, yep. Sacrifice. Sacrifice? Isn't that the name of one of the key fragments? That's right. I've been trading notes with leaders from every town in the land. You're amazing, Popola. Hmm. This entire affair strikes me as a bit too convenient. I'm afraid Grimoire Vice is correct. What do you mean? <sighs> the Airy has been shut off from the world for years. And now they've not only opened trade routes, but they freely exchange information about the Shadow Lord. I agree. It seems rather unnatural and dangerous. You're overthinking it. Besides, I don't care if it's dangerous. I won't get Yona back by just sitting around and waiting. If there are shades there, I'll just kill him and be done with it. Oh dear. Well, if that's the way you feel, I guess I won't stop you. Try speaking with the chief when you get there. Alright. To the area. Airy, airy, airy. We're gonna see lots of people die. <laughs> Go see the chief. It was a soul crushing place. Oh man. Speaking of souls, a lot of souls are gonna be gone. Eesh, 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 eesh. I wonder if we're gonna hear like all all of the souls, you know, talking. Uh Oh yeah, Kaine was knocked out for most of it, so we're probably gonna have like some dream segment with her. Maybe. We might have a dream segment with her. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so I really don't want to hear, hear, hear that, that tyrant. I want to see how he looks. Desire. Oh. We do not desire needless conflict. If we can continue to live with humans, then we can continue to live peacefully. But that young man will come. Yes, the young man will come. He will kill us all, women and children included. What should we do? What can we do? Uh, excuse me? Uh, are they talking about us? Are they talking about near? Uh, I don't. I don't think we heard that before. Hmm. So I'm guessing it's like the shade in the human disguise. 
that 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 were talking. Uh, okay. Well, uh, let's go talk to the chief. Do you chief or uh? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, let's go talk to the chief first. Because I remember talking to the chief, then going to the that security guard, or or just regular guard. I, I have no idea. Uh. And then Emil is gonna just destroy this entire place. Oh man. Even though that 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 cutscene was awesome, it's just like, just awe, just awe, emotions. <laughs> uh, hello, we're here from Popla's village. It's all over. We came to ask about the letter you sent. Our days are numbered. Our village is doomed. As cheerful as ever, it seems. You're the one who wrote the letter, right? I, I don't know about any letter. What the hell is going on here? It may be faster for us to take our inquiries elsewhere. Let us ask around. Someone must know something. Alright. I was about to jump down there, just like, but, uh... Can't really. <laughs> I really wish there was a shortcut to... Like, from there... To there. Like, it would make things that much easier, just... Well, it kind of looks like they were constructing a way there. Oh no, that, that's just for that so wind pointer thing, wind direction. Uh, yeah, they they really should have put, you know, a bridge connecting to the different areas, like from here. And we're gonna have to talk to you, don't we? A letter, huh? Yeah, I think I heard something about that. So, you know about the letter? Hmm, maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Ah, which is it, man? Oh, uh, and if I may ask, are you friends of Kaine? You could say that. Ah, I've heard the rumors. Here to hunt shades, are you? Indeed. Our aim is to defeat every last one. Every... Every last one? Everyone? 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 Vice! Beware. This man is a shade. Damn it! It's a trap! They figured as much. You guys sure are taking your goddamn time. Wait, hold, 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 hold up. You're distracted by the local welcoming mm. party. Mm. Want some help? A carnival of murder. I oh. love it. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what was that? Kaine, the villagers are possessed. But not all of them. Some are still human. So be careful. Hey, hey, stop that. It just knows that, you know, the two were, were just humans. And then, like, Mio just just attacking him. I can't take this anymore. Lady, she's a shade. No. no, no, you people are the monsters here. 
Stay back, kid. Your sister is one of them now. I don't care what she is. She's my sister, and I love her. People are behaving as if we are the villains. Kaine! Kill them! Kill them now! Get Bulath? No! You've got to stop this! We're trying to save you from the shades! Please! You have to stop! Emil! We need to get out of here! Kaine! Kaine, get up! Hurry! Oh, the little vixen has finally run out of steam. Is it my turn now? Are you sure about that, sunshine? Stop this at once. Leave us in peace. He's a shade. My husband's a shade. Ugh. Now just learning about the context of... Thing is just like now makes me not want to fight. Villagers are under attack over there. Oh man. Please, I beg of you. Man, I have to fight. Just uh. Damn it, Kaine! You gotta get up. Emil, watch Kaine. I'll go clean up over there. It's all over. This village is history. Oh yeah, you can you can see the future now, can you? Actually, I could what could just vanish from there. Black swirls be. Right. Uh, uh. Ow. A shade as well. That thing sucked up the villagers. No! If we keep this up, we're gonna kill them all! We can't let that happen! Just the, the combination of like all from within, the all the uh, villages together, they can't make up like who they are. Is this the combined power of all those shades? It will take more than a barrage of magic to stop us. The first to waver is the first to die. 
I sense magic coming from the center of that uh. eye. Uh, I'm just, I'm really going head on. Wait, I think those are actual people. Hold nothing back. Those are shades. Okay, is this the moment where we gotta go back? The surrounding tentacles appear to deflect magic. Go. Now, focus your magic on the beast center. Such speed. This is where we go around, right? Its weak point is located around the back. Try attacking it from above. That is what I'll I'm planning on doing. Emil! Emil! Uh, I'll, I'll keep it busy. You oh, no. should be able to attack from behind. Go around and get it. Please, hurry! That's what Emil I'm trying to do. Circle behind the creature at once. You must strike it in the eye. Oh, is this like a pattern like in um Drag Guard One, like the pattern of of like a the defeating like the final boss for Route E is just like this. Just sending out pulses of white and black. Did we get it? It is escaping to the inner level. I'm coming. Gotta catch my breath. Careful with me. It won't help anyone if we lose you here. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Okay. God damn it! It beat the hell out of that thing! How can it still move? Its combined powers are beyond even my greatest suspicion. Dang. Let's go. Come on! Help me take it out! I'm on it! Abnormality 6, 23, 23, 3, self-delete, daily abnormation been found, uh, relapse resulting, ah. Fast low times. Emil, Emil, wait! Emil! He's gone. His instincts have taken hold. The ultimate weapon is being deployed. Ah, oh, fuck. This ain't good, sunshine.
uncontrollable magic. I have to protect the people I love. That was my only thought as I unleashed a magic powerful enough to destroy not only the shade, but everyone else as well. All of them. So many innocent lives. Destroy. Eviscerate. Crush. Kill. These are the dark impulses that overwrite all other thoughts. As a being that was created to be a magical weapon, these are my instincts. Or maybe it's better to call them our instincts. Emile Stream, Rampage. A klaxon sounds from deep within the bowels of the laboratory. Thick metal shutters drop down, sealing off the room with a series of dull metal thugs. Abort the experiment. Number six is out of control. Everyone get out here now. Get out of here. The researcher's words are abruptly cut off as massive hand materialize out of the gloom and lifts him high into the air. The researchers begin to scream. He screams and screams, the sound echoing off the walls of the laboratory until the hand squeezes down, coating the room in a deep crimson hue. The rest of his colleagues stand in silence, mouths open, unable to process what they have just seen. Then, a female scientist takes a step back and lets fly with a heartbreaking wail. But this is a terrible mistake, for the sound of her cry suddenly brings forth a monster in all of its terrible glory. Its body is a bloated corpse, its head a smiling, a grinning skull, and it is massive, many times the size of a human. The head lulls from side to side as it tromps about the room on all fours bring to mind the wild maneuverings of some wretched starving beast. This creature, this thing, is experiment weapon number six, also known as Halua. No, oh no, please stop. Oh God, save me, save me. I don't want to die. One by one, the maddening cries of the researchers are silenced. If number six understands their petition, petitions, pays them no heed, instead continuing its rampage of destruction and slaughter with a focus that borders on obsession. After an eternity, the screaming stops, the alarms fall silent, and only then does the creature make a sound, howling out with an unfathomable roar that echoes up and down the empty halls of the blood-soaked laboratory. It's a sound that curses those who had dared be, bring such evil into the world, and yet one that also seems to be pleading for help. Two sets of footsteps echo in the an otherwise silent corridor in the first laboratory, first level of the laboratory. One set belongs to a young boy, his eyes blindfolded folded and his hands restrained. The other belongs to a severe man in a long white coat. The man drags the boy along by means of a long chain attached to a set of shackles on his wrist. Rubble is scattered here and there across the floor of the corridor, making the journey an exceedingly difficult one for a boy he cannot see. Um, excuse me? Could you please walk a little slower, slo sir? I'm not used to being blindfolded and, rather than stopping, the man only increases his pace, causing the boy to stumble in an attempt to keep up. This last humili humiliation proves too much, and the boy finds himself unable to arrest his fall. Without the ability to brace himself, he topples to the floor, smashing his head on a pile of debris and causing a trickle of blood to warm its way down his pale, frightened face. Agonized by the pain, the boy inadvertently opens his eyes, causing the falling drops of blood to emit a strong, strange crackling sound before transforming into tiny white rocks. Close your damn eyes, roars the man. I I yes, sir, stammers the boy as he slams his lids shut. He hadn't realized the blindfold had slipped off during the fall, but now he keeps his eyes squeezed shut so tightly that sparkles appear against the black of his visions. 
the boy's meal, also known as number seven. He has a magical weapon whose eyes are capable of turning to stone, and anything that falls under their gaze. Don't look at me, barks the man. Never look at me. I'm sorry, sir. I'm looking at the ground now, so if you just hand me the blind, instead of waiting for him to finish, the man extends one foot and presses Emil's face to the floor with a heavy black boot. Sir, stop! You're hurting me! I told you to keep your eyes and your mouth shut, so do it! The man knows this boy, this weapon, could wipe, out, wipe him out with a single glance, and yet subduing him in this way gives him a sense of relief. After making certain the boy is sufficiently cowed, the man leans down, achieves the blindfold, and nods tightly around the boy's quivering head. Right then, on your feet. Let's move. Emil staggers to his feet, trying to ignore the red liquid oozing down his face. The blood isn't doesn't matter. The pain doesn't matter. All that matters is finishing the job they had set out for him to do. The second le level of the laboratory is in even worse shape than the first. The environs are littered with rubble and rock, making the thought of a decent foothold laughable. When the man's eyes linger on a section of rubble stained in deep red, he has a sudden image of warm gooey brownie slather and strawberry sauce. His stomach lurches at the thought, but when he attempts to avert his eyes, they land on the remains of a human being rendered into what could only be described as paste. The man blinks. His eyes go strangely blank before attempting to determine how many humans had to be sacrificed to create the scattered piles of flesh around him. After a moment, his thoughts simply cease altogether, as if his mind realized that trying to put such a thing into form is folly. Y you can go the rest of the way on your own, says the man in a voice much weaker than he wishes to be. I mean, what does it matter? You're not even human. You're a monster. With this, the man spins around and dashes back down the hall. A helpless meal simply listens as the footsteps of his erstwhile captor fades into the distance. Emil finds himself alone in a room with the stench of death and blood. For a moment, he considers opening his eyes, but the thought of the horrors that awaits him quickly squash that this plan. Instead, he stands still and listens intently. Eventually, a far-off sound reaches his ears. That's the howl I heard before. Emil resumes walking, using the sound of the distant voice to guide him, almost as if it was calling him home. By the time Emil reaches the third level, he is moving on memory as much as sound. His hand and face are covered in fresh wounds from numerous falls, but every time he thinks about giving up, his mind returns to his sister. We studied together. We ate cookies together. We cried together. We laughed together. Sometimes I wish I was the only one who got yelled at. That's why I was never lonely. Our being together allowed me to stay strong. For Emil, his sister was all he had to live for. So holding that feeling close to his chest, he presses on, one slow step after another. Finally, Emil finds himself drawn close to a certain experimental chamber in the deepest part of the laboratory. The hell is very close now. And as he touches the switch that controls the door, he thinks about his mission. Number six, number six is the ultimate weapon. She is his sister, and he must turn her to stone. The door slowly opens, revealing the massive interior of the experimentation chamber. After a few steps, Emil removes his blindfold and slowly opens his eyes. His sister looks bef lurks before him, but she looks nothing like the girl he once knew. Instead. He sees a savage beast crawling on all fours through the shredded remains of the researchers. As the thing that had been his sister stops and tilts its head in Emil's direction, he focuses his gaze on it. A series of soft, crunching sounds emerge from the creatures as its magic does its terrible work. First the fingers, then the hands, arms, legs, head. What little color the beast once possessed fades to a dull ashen gray, and yet somehow 
It summons what its strength remains and pulls itself for, towards India one slow, lumbering effort at a time. Wailing, the massive monstrosity closes in. Is she worried about me? Or is she coming to kill me? Emil feels prepared to accept either outcome. After all, this was his older sister, the person he loved more than anyone else in the world. Halua, I... The moment Emil speaks, number six comes to a sudden halt. Silence descends on the chamber as the siblings stare at each other. I'm sorry, Halua, but everyone says you're too powerful. They say it's too dangerous unless I seal you away. I'm so sorry. As Emil watches her body begin to turn to stone once more, number six simply waits in utter perfect silence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The moment number six petrification, petrification is complete, her memories flood into Emil's head. Mind. The two of them huddling together in the cold, all alone in the world, with no one to protect them. All she wanted was to save her little brother, and yet it was that little brother who, in a sense, saved her. The moment the petrification is complete, Emil sinks to his knees. A frozen sister and a little brother racked with sin. Alone in this cold cage, the two of them weep in a single silent voice. It was our combined power that destroyed the eerie. Whole existences, entire lives, even their memories. We took it all. We took everything. My sweet gentle sister turned into a monster. And the same thing will happen to me, now that I have her power. If my instincts as a weapon win out and destroy me in the process, if that power ends up hurting someone I love, I... for you, and I'll be dead. We owe you. But... But I... It's all right. It best be off. Yeah. Okay, uh, we got a bit more of Emil's uh, backstory. Uh, obviously, we, we knew like uh, it was his sister who was the, that giant monster, and you know that that's how it came to look like this. He absorbed her. Hmm. But if he turned her to stone, how was she still, you know, uh, moving around, like, when we came back? Like, I'm guessing, like, the petrification somehow wore off? Or it was less effective on her? That's why it caused her to revert back? I mean, it, it allowed, you know, she, she, she was petrified long enough for that the researchers was able to maybe Popol has found some information about the Shadow Lord. That, that she the was um that she was you know be able to be pinned up. Very well. But she was turned to stone. So how were they able to you know like chain her up and like 
put put it put the like stakes in her without you know breaking her while she was you know petrified that, that that's some of the you know little stuff i i want to know but uh anyways uh oh dang <laughs> didn't mean to do that uh so the last thing we have to do is uh go to uh go to facade and uh get rid of the wolf that's the uh, loyal Cerberus so just gotta do that but uh, like uh just just seeing that just like it, it really sucks that like uh Emil you know lost control of his powers like that just and you know, just destroyed the entire village. That just sucks. Absolutely no control. I wish there was like some kind of training montage where you're like, yes, let's let's take better control of your powers, you know. I just want to check here. Alright. Uh, just trying to see if there's anything different. Hey, Popola. Ah, you're back. Have you learned anything more about the Shadow Lord's key? I'm sorry, but it's going to take me some time yet. I see. Well, can I take something off your plate in the meantime? Hmm. Oh. How about this? You know the ferryman with the red bag, right? Well, he's been skipping out on work lately. Can I ask you to go to Seafront and check on him? Sure thing. Oh, and then we have this whole little dilemma. I think I might just skip over all that, you know, skip over to that dialogue just because we know what happens, unfortunately. But, uh, oh, we can actually know about the dialogue with the that that uh, little girl shade this feels alarmingly familiar Tah. I'm sure that couple is merely having another one of their inane spats let us do our utmost not to get dragged into it this time hmm? alright so uh, just uh, go Um, just trying to remember, was this the one that was like, uh, oh, hey, you, you gotta go, but up, oh, and then gotta go back down, then I gotta go, go to the postman, something like that, right? I really hope not. I think it is, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that, 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 that this is that, uh, that little mission here. I don't think I've ever seen fog this thick before. Oh, okay, so now we're learning how uh, the postman met, met that girl. Huh? What's that? Okay, got a little bit more detail. Oh, 
off. What's wrong? Oh, hey, I remember. Yep. Uh, I had a fight with my... Mm -hmm, yeah. But it's all... I was saving up a bunch. That's... Well, sure, I... I mean... All right. Oh. <laughs> okay. And here we go again. <sighs> Shall we begin by asking around at the tavern like before? Okay, and then it's gonna ask us uh, about. Oh, hey, hey up there. Looking, really? Yeah, the guy took off and. Hardly. They're arguing. Anyway, I think he's from that village with. I think his brother is a god. Thanks for the tip. Say. Okay, so. Got gold. Go back up to the guard. Oh, man, I hate that. Just like. Eh, it's annoying. <laughs> Go up to talk to just one guy. One guy. It couldn't be the guy that's right here. Oh, oh, hello. New scene. New scene. Hard to believe a ship of this size managed to run aground. Hmm, what was that? Hey, is someone there? Okay, I definitely heard someone cough just now. Maybe it's one of those kids from town? But where are they? There you are. What are you doing here, kid? And who are you, anyway? Were you a passenger on this ship, maybe? <laughs> hey, it's okay. You don't need to be scared. So, he befriended her for a while. Hmm. To think that couple's petty squabbles have become something of an attraction for the locals. Doesn't surprise me in the least. Seeing people like that puts a little spring in your step, you know? You humans truly are a maddening bunch. Such buffoonery. Sorry, my stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh. We, we, we heard plenty of times. Well, I mean, plenty of times, I mean that, that one time, but, uh... See you. Yeah. So, just gotta go back up, and gotta go talk to the one guard that's right at the entrance. And then back down, and yada yada, yeah. there how are you feeling um, well your cough seems better at least check it out I brought you some bread today huh. <laughs> oh easy there jeez you must have been starving well, look, no one's gonna take this from you, so just take it easy so you don't choke on it, okay? <laughs> so, uh, what were you doing on this boat, kid? Actually, scratch that. First things first. I can't just keep calling you kid. You got a name? Well, this is going nowhere fast. Let's see. Hmm. Louise. Yeah, what about Louise? I mean, it just sort of popped into my head, but what do you think? <laughs> Guess you're okay with it. 
Well, it's nice to meet you, Louise. Searched the southern plains back when the wife ran off too, oh, right? Oh, come on. I believe we did, yes. Lots changed since then. So it's kind of nice when we find something that hasn't. The fact that couple is still arguing almost fills me with... I don't know. Hope, I guess. If you asked me, that particular couple could benefit from a little change. <laughs> oh, yoga. Change as in... a better spouse. you what's up you're related to the ferryman who carries a red bag around right yeah he's my little brother haven't seen him in a while though a shame have you any idea where he may have absconded to not a clue like I said I haven't seen him oh that's unfortunate oh but the last time I did see him, he said something about using his ferry to deliver letters. Maybe you should try talking to someone at the post office. I guess we could ask the postman over in Seafront. Just once, I would enjoy receiving a quest that can be sold in the general vicinity of the Asker. Okay, back to... library. Eh. I cannot believe how many trips we have made simply to track down a single man. It's all right to do this kind of thing every now and then. I only pray this is not the calm before some manner of storm. Uh, oh, the, the say, storm is coming. Lad, have you ever penned a missive? You mean a letter? No, I'm not big on writing. It always takes me forever to figure out what I want to say. Eh. <laughs> Say, where'd you get that red bag? Hmm? Found it on the ship, did you? <laughs> you kids are so darn curious about everything. Anywho, it's good to see you. Afraid I don't have any bread today, but I did bring you something. Here, it's a ribbon. Let me tie it in your hair for you. Well, what do you think? Pretty nice, huh? What's that on the floor? Oh, it's a mirror. Well, that's a stroke of luck. Let's go ahead and check out your new look. If you go over there where it's brighter, you'll be able to see yourself more clearly. Uh, what's wrong? Don't you want to see? Oh, I see. You don't like sunlight. Guess your eyes are pretty sensitive after spending all this time in the dark, huh? Uh. Well, 
Well, it's not like we can have you stay here forever. We should work on getting you out of here so you and me can go look at the sea together. How's that sound? They, they, they really want us to, like, be helpful for the shades. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, uh, oh, over here. Hey, Postman. Oh, sorry. You're not him. I'm sure as hell not. I just swung by to pick up a letter and wound up running the damn place. Anyway, you here for a package or something? Uh, no. There's this couple who's always fighting and the husband took off, so I'm trying to track him down. Ring any bells? <laughs> Sorry, pal. You're asking the wrong guy. Still, that's pretty weird. My buddy's daughter took off too. Maybe running away is the cool thing to do now. I find it exceedingly unlikely this pair of runaways is mere coincidence. Any idea where she might have went? That is the question, isn't it? Actually, you know what? I bet she went to check out the huge shipwreck that drifted into the inlet the other day. Not often something like that comes around. It's all the kids have been talking about. Alright, to the ship. Load faster, come on. Let's get to it. Hey, Louise. I brought your food for today. What's wrong? Aren't you hungry? Huh. You haven't been eating much lately. Are you okay? Well then, let's try this. Imagine that sounds actually coming from him and not an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's called a song. Humming a jaunty tune is the best thing for putting a spring in your step. That was him humming? Songs are like a little bit of wisdom that makes the tough times easier. I love them personally. I mean, not that I'm any good at singing. <laughs> Whoa, your voice is a bit rough there. But you're actually pretty good. Huh. You know, I knew someone who lived in the town lighthouse before she died. She used to hum this same song a lot. I heard it every time I stopped by to deliver something, and I guess it just kind of stuck. Of course, that was quite a while ago. <laughs> hey, are, are you trying to cheer me up? <laughs> you are a kind soul, Louise. All right, uh, oof, mm, mm, you, 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 you really kind of get me. <laughs> I'm sensing some really weird magic going on here, sunshine. You feeling it too? Yeah, is it 
a shade? <laughs> Are you actually trying to think something through rather than just jumping in and killing? What's wrong, Kaine? Nothing. It's just... I'm sensing a presence from Seafront. Something like a shade. A shade in the town? That's not good. All right, okay. Yeah, so it's now kind of uh, like actually thinking, is this actually a shade? Or is it something that, that just feels like a shade? Something like that. <laughs> a shipwreck, is it? I suppose we might as well investigate, seeing as how we lack any other tenable leads. Right, let's head for the inlet. Kaine, Emil. What's going on? I haven't seen you two come into Seafront in, well, ever, I guess. Sorry for the surprise. Kaine said she sensed something strange in the area. Strange how? Like a sh- Maybe. I'm not sure. There's some kind of sound or something coming from up ahead. What an incredibly specific piece of information the hussy has graced us with. <laughs> what is it, Kaine? Nothing. Let's get moving. Alright. Did, 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 you know, did, did they really need to, like, put this into, like, just have... No, and we'll just, I mean, near just walk forward a little bit and then activate the cutscene. We're gonna need to figure out some way to get inside that thing. This ship is in a state of want and decay. Surely we can find a hole or some such if we put our minds to it. These planks seem to be covering a rather large hole. We can probably get in if we move them out of the way. I'm worried about whatever it is Kaine is sensing. We should make sure we're really prepared before going inside. Uh, I'm ready. Let's do it. So, were you able to write that letter? You know, now that I've taught you how. Not yet, huh? Well, there's certainly no reason to rush. <laughs> you know, it makes me happy that you've taken such a shine to me. First time we met, I didn't have the foggiest idea what was going on in that head of yours. <laughs> so, hey, I've been thinking. <laughs> How about you come live with me? It might be kind of nice to have a daughter around. Not into it, huh? Guess I should have figured. I'm sad to hear it, but it's your choice, of course. Yep, uh, sorry. Huh? The floor's wet. Wait, is this blood? Oh dear. Are you. Oh, baby, that is one hell of a smell. We got something real nasty nearby, eh, Sunshine? <sighs> Come on, don't tell me you ain't picked up on it yet. You of all people gotta know what this smell means. 
This ship is in poor condition indeed. Do try not to thrash about and bring its timbers down around us, hussy. Whatever. <laughs> you sure you're all right, Kane? You really shouldn't push yourself. Hey, I've got an idea. How about you and me search outside and get some nice fresh air in the process? Sure. Let's do that. Sounds good. Take care of Kaine for us, Emil. Emil is on the case. Come on, Kaine. Let's get the lead out. This place is pretty gloomy. I'm having a hard time imagining any townsfolk hanging around here. Well, as we've no other leads, let the search begin. Outside light is in short supply. I ask you, how are we to do any searching if we cannot see a blasted thing? Uh, all right. We require a key. Okay. Look there, on the floor. And there's still some oil. Just trying to go through this as fast as I can. <laughs> Wait. Did you see that girl jump? I did indeed. Yep. Perhaps she is the runaway with. Hmm? There's no one here. Weird. It's like we just saw a ghost. Oh, what foolishness. There we go. Got the whole key. What is with this ship anyway? There may be clues somewhere that tell of how it ran aground. It looks really dark up ahead. Then perhaps we ought to make use of that. Yep, you gotta use that lantern. Do, 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 grab this. Or look at this. What's this? An apple. I wager it was dropped by that. Perhaps he absconded to this ship to. Let's keep moving. I really want to know, you know, what she said during the boss fight. I really oh, want to know. That sounds just now. Sounds like it came from the floor above us. This barrel's been knocked over. Surely it was toppled by the girl. Wait, cast your. There's the footsteps. The missing child left. I uh, just want to grab any items we can. Man, this book's got some serious. It would seem to be this ship. Book log. Records log, of the log, get it traveled, the weather it encountered, until the day the records. What the hell happened? You know, death, slaves, whatnots. Nope, nope, nope. Up, 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 up. Did you see that? Oh, shit. Hang on. Okay. Nope. Move this over. There's a breeze come. That white vape. Give it a nudge. A hidden room. How delightful. Yeah, thank goodness I, I grabbed that. These chests are and what do they con I wish. Looks like those are no mere two I shudder. Torture room. If only there was like plaques I said, oh yes, this was this is the torture room. Yada yada. There don't seem to be any shades around at least. Fortunate for us. Now let no more time be wasted in our search for the townsfolk. The white track. Wait. Oh, okay. So it was her trying to sing. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, Whatever that sound was, it stopped. I okay. Swear it sounded like a girl. This is a voice pipe. A contraption by which one's voice can travel to a faraway location. Which means the girl is in whatever room this- Hold a moment. I spy- <sighs> Yes. The Onward and uh- Okay. This little lantern has brought us quite far, hasn't it? Yeah. And the light it gives off makes me feel, I don't know, safe somehow. Well, aren't we- Looks like somebody's- It says the ship was attacked. Seems like the person who wrote this holed up in here, while the monster roamed around the ship, killed- Do you think that actually happened? I cannot say. Though the term monster might well be referring to a shade. Surprised the king can't use, you know, the- the- Voice pipe and other things. It? Hey, herb or herb, herb. Oh, damn! The hell is this? Perhaps it is waft. Grab this. Another apple. Just how many apples? Let's. Mm, oh. Uh, vice? Dang. Speak to me, lad. Uh, I can't see a thing down here. I suspect we may- The lantern got away from me during the fall. Hmm? Is that- Nah. Like, I can just barely see. <laughs> Uh, are they already programmed? Have you still like found a... the lantern? We have no alternative but to scour the ground for it. I was about to say, like, did they already program like Emil and Kanye to Boys, be there? We found about time. Oh dear, they are all people from town. Oh no, this can't be real. Why? Why did he? Why did everyone have God. Damn it! Pull yourself together, lad. Remember the presence, kind. I won't let them get away with. Yep. Oh no. Uh, I was wrong. I could have sworn that that you know, there was. Well, anyways, I, I was wrong. Oh. No, that, that that that's not how things work. Hey there, you two. Hey, I didn't know you guys came back inside. Did we ever? Found a nice hole in the wall to slide through. But then we heard a bunch of noise coming from that super dark floor downstairs. You sure had us worried. Yeah, sorry about that. You feeling better, Kane? A little, yeah. Sorry for the trouble. Good. That's... Uh, that's good. Jeez, you seem really down in the dumps. Did something happen? <laughs> Tell me, Kaine, that presence you sensed. It's on the floor above us. I feared as much. It seems we've little choice but to press onward. Oh, 
Upward and onwards. <laughs> oh man, that smell is getting right. How you feeling there, sunshine? Not great. Can't you tell? Like, how come no one said, "Oh, uh, kind of"? Who, who are you talking to? Surprise, no one's saying that. Be the final, the culprit who murdered the townspeople. Let's go. Let's see what she was saying. It's that girl we saw when we first entered the ship. Old lad, this is a lone child sitting inside a hulking ship littered with corpses. Something is clearly amiss. There. Oh man, this shade is nuts! I think I'm in love. You can feel her power hanging in the air! She ain't even trying yet. <laughs> Things are finally heating up. Huh? Could this girl be the presence you sensed, Kaine? <gasps> oh, hey, it's you. Been a while. Wait, you're the postman. What are you doing here? Oh, I've been coming here a lot lately. I think this girl was on the ship when it drifted in. I've been keeping an eye on her until she's well enough to leave. Hey, so this is kind of awkward, but... The girl is, you know, bleeding? I brought a bunch of bandages with me, but... Uh, oh, oh yeah, this. <laughs> well, how exactly does one deal with a woman's time of the month? S sorry, sorry. Clearly crossed a line there. Forget I said anything. Stay the hell away from her. She isn't. <laughs> oh. So she went down to rescue him. Kaine, Camille, we'll figure something out. The two of them will be fine, but you and I must withdraw. <sighs> the ship is collapsing. We must leave at once. Very much aware of that. Thanks. Let's go. Shades, they're in the way. Yeah, get out of the way. Looks like we can get out through that hole up there. Glad you two made it out in one piece. Yeah, we're good. But that poor postman is still trapped inside. We'd better go help him out. No shade would dare pursue us into sunlight such as this. <laughs> we should use the opportunity to ready ourselves. <laughs> what on earth? Hurt by the sun. That is not precisely the case. 
It most certainly is being burned by the sunlight. However, its regenerative abilities far outpace whatever damage the light is able to inflict. This light, something is coming. Get out of the way at once! Oh, listen! It's singing! This thing actually thinks it's a person! <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know where the singing lessons came from, but I do know it's sure as hell trying to eat us. Ah. Uh. Get over here. Come on. Aim for the tentacles with faces on them. There we go. There's one. Don't stop now. Focus on the next one. Oh. Attack with all that you have. She, she, she really must like the postman. <laughs> Did we get it? Things huge. <laughs> to think it could recover from such a grievous wound. Ordinary attacks aren't gonna do shit against this thing. Hey, the guy from before has collapsed on the beach. That shade's got some kind of hard on for it. We should take him hostage. Shut your yap. I'm not in the business of using my blades on people. Is this thing turning its body into spears and shooting them at us? Oh, he regained health. Or, or did it? Oh. Oh, oh yeah, it is Fine, definitely beginning straight. I guess we'll all just sit around a campfire and sing songs until we get murdered. Damn it! <laughs> it's, it's funny, like just it's just that uh, you know, the dialogue of Kine that we heard originally, it just sounds like, oh man, she's just making like, oh you know, she she's actually like, like, oh god damn it, whatnot, but 
she's actually just like responding to uh, Tyran. The number of spears flying our way is increasing. Yeah, I can see that. Damn it. My word, if this continues. This thing immortal? How can it withstand such an onslaught? I'm... I'm really scared, guys! We will be in grave danger if it unleashes that attack. We must stop it! Oh, it's cheap! Oh, we got... I had the last one, but the game's like, nope, nope, you're not gonna get it. Not gonna get it. So you can't actually do it. Unless I missed something. I think we're in trouble. What the hell are you doing? Stop him already! My body won't... Damn it! Fuck! doing you're gonna get yourself killed Come on. I try waiting. She's like, oh, I thought dude, he was going to say anything.
you can make out what she's saying, but it's just like, it's so very the story that you can just, you, you can just hear very little of it. I, I wish, you know, they could just tone down that just a little bit, make it, make it so that we can hear, but like, they don't understand it, like the in-game characters don't understand it. Damage report February 6, 2008. Wall Jericho collapsed. 5,000 people believe dead. Quest for reinforcements streaming in from multiple locations. Continue monitor the situation. Thanks. You really saved our bacon. You've all done so much for me. Offering a little refuge is the least I can do. I don't have the words to express how sorry I am. We all knew townspeople were out there being eaten by a shade. But I never imagined I was taking care of it this entire time. The fault lies with that foul creature alone, Postman. Not yourself. I... I hope I can believe that someday. <sighs> All right, well, we'd better get going. There's someone else we need to break this news to. Fair enough. I hope to see you out there on the old letter trail again soon. Did you find my husband? Uh, yeah. The thing is... Wait, why are you hesitating? I is he alright? Please tell me he's alright. Come on, say something already! Gotta uh, tell her the truth, obviously. Your husband was killed by a shade. I'm sorry. We tracked him down, but it was already too late. No. It can't be true. That big idiot. Always carrying his bag around. Thinking about me all the time. Oh god. This can't be happening. <laughs> it saddens this old tone to think we'll never hear those two at each other's throats again. If only I'd gotten to him sooner. Damn it. Do not let it burden you so, lad. You did the best you were able. Alright, uh, popular time, right? Yeah. So, uh, hmm. Wonder what kind of, uh, cutscene we might see next. Will it be new or not? hell's this, Sunshine? A letter. That thing wrote it for the postman. Ha! Man, that is some grade-A chicken scratch! She probably copied the letters as best she could. So, what's it say? I think our friend's gonna wake up soon. Let's go. Right. Hey, Kane. Yeah? 
when you were threatening that shade on the beach the other day, how did you know it was trying to protect the postman? Just a feeling, I guess. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, oh. I was gonna hit. Damn it. So she's not just gonna tell us what, what I was gonna say? Just like, I'm gonna guess I said, I love you, something like that. Or thank you, 